I'm Jack Barmester and you're watching utefans.net. Welcome to another great episode of The Extra Point, brought to you by the Ken Garf University Club and presented by UFans.net, the original home for UFans. I'm joined by Devin Kafusi, Cal Beck, and Robert Johnson. I'm your host, Andy Brown, and Coach Prime and the Buffaloes just came into Salt Lake City. What do we think about that game? Um, I mean, Travis Hunter is amazing. He is an amazing player. Yeah, he is a, um, a different type of – he's a, he's a, a new-era player that can uh, go both ways. But he made some amazing plays today, and um, one of them that he dropped the inter he dropped the touchdown pass to me. I was like, "That's athleticism right there at his finest. Like he has the ability to make plays." But you come down to Salt Lake City, it's just how it goes, you know. Like you sometimes you got to walk away with that L and hold it. <laughs> I was excited to see people on both sides of the play of uh, the ball play because you were going to see people that hadn't gotten in yet. There was a lot of people that missed, um, but. It played out exactly how I thought it would. It was closer than I thought it would actually be because Colorado is the most penalized team in the country. I think the over-under for their penalties was nine for the game, mm -hmm. and they're the most sacked. They're the third most penalized team. They're the most sacked team in the country. So you come to Salt Lake, Sac Lake City, I expected there to be more pressure than there was, but it ended up turning out the way I foresaw. I think it went great. For everything you want in a senior day, I want to come out, execute the game plan, which we saw, Having Luke Patari step up, really putting the game on our running backs and our own line, which they played phenomenal. Defense stepping up, um, you know, sending Prime back home to Colorado with that L. So great senior day. Super happy for the season and the home games here. So our fifth string quarterback steps in today, doesn't do anything to hurt us. What do we think about his performance? He did exactly what needed to be done. He did the game plan. Control the clock, like I always mentioned. And on top of that, we run the ball well and then set up a couple of play action passes, but nothing that was too crazy. He played within his game plan, which it worked out really well. It was a couple of plays where it was like in the red zone, I seen a play that was like, come on. But hey, he did exactly what he needed to be doing, which is not turn the ball over and make sure to control the clock. For somebody that has the story that he has just over the last six months, it was amazing to see him hold that together today and get that job done. I mean, this is a perfect example of what the program exudes of next man up. I mean, he's, I, I don't know how many reps he's gotten in practice. I, I have no idea, but he was able to manage the game to a point where he was effective. He got his first touchdown. That was fun. And you could tell that the kids were rallying around him. Like it was, let's go out and do this. And I was happy that he got the opportunity on a senior day such as today. No, it's football, and for us this year, it's been Utah football, that next man of mentality. Luke was there when I was there, and he's our scout team quarterback, was away for the season. Once injuries happened, got back into uh, Salt Lake City right before the season started, was already back in the jersey on the sideline, um, giving hand signals, and it was so great to see him come out and capitalize on his opportunity here. Uh, last week, Cal, you talked about yards after contact. How did Jaquindin and Sione do with that? The most important yak, right? Yes. And it was phenomenal. It is, they didn't go down after the first hit. I loved how they used Vaki to keep the defense honest on the edges. They kept stretching them and stretching them. That was just to keep the backers on the edge of the box so they couldn't crowd that box. And Jaquindin, they all ran well. And it, Glover ran well. It, the running game was there. And it was exactly what they needed to complement the passing game. But what I would say about Jaquindin Jackson, though, is that he, he, he showed he got some swag. He was getting up talking in the ear, letting them know, hey, welcome to Salt Lake, but then it's going to be all day. And he did this in the second half, which shows that he was in. Like, his, his mindset and everything, those little plays of, like, extra yards and then getting up, you know, hey, first down, letting them know what it is, that, that pumps us up. Like, Do you think the biggest key to success in the locker room was his yards? Do you think that he shouldered that and said, this one's on me, I've got to take this? I believe so. Um, like you said, I was down there on the sideline, and some of those hits were some loud pops. He was making them pay. And like you said, seeing him chirping, getting into that full game of football mindset late into the you know, second half. So it just fires everyone up as well. It's what you want to see out of your ball carrier, your workhorse. That's holding it down for the offense during this last game of the whole season here. What do we think? I just Something that really jumped out to me this game was that touchdown pass 
uh, by Colorado, I think in the first half that they took away. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. So I feel like that changed the whole game. Because to me, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm kind of advocating for Colorado here, but I thought that was a for sure touchdown. I, the referees were busy today. And to be honest, they, I thought they made a lot of good calls. Granted, it's probably the last day that they're employed since the Pac-12 is no longer existing. It was a good, it was a good way to close out the conference at, at home. But, I mean, they made up for a lot of bad calls for, what, a decade? With today. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought the, I thought the key of the game that turned is, was their fumble. When you saw, I literally saw O'Toole grab the quarterback after he fumbled and pull him away from the ball so that we could recover it, and then the momentum was ours. Like, after I saw that, my wife was even like, can you do that? And I'm like, yeah, there's no holding on a fumble. That was, that was awesome to see happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the crowd also, uh, like, surprisingly went towards it when they seen it happen. It's mm -hmm. just like, okay, momentum shift, and on top of that, the crowd is back into it. Because it got to a point where it was some scary plays that was kind of happening where it's like, is this going to be a close game? How is it going to look? But once that happened, oh, yeah, the crowd got into it, and it was just like, okay, let's just easy selling after this. Let's just get through the game, do what we need to do, and just go from there. Devin, how do you feel about the defensive performance today by the Utes? I think they did a great job. You mentioned Connor coming up with that big turnover there, um, adding to the momentum of the game. And that's all we know as football as It's a game of momentum. So having big plays like that, as we know, as turnovers being key indicators in success of football games was huge, as well as those big third downs. The stadium was rocking. What stuck out to me was that Cole Bishop hit on that third down. That was just some football, straight up football, great hit. That's what everyone wants to see here in Rice Eccles. And I saw Cole make a phenomenal play on their third down when they were driving to keep momentum. He read the double post with a skinny post and the deep post behind him. And Travis Hunter got upset at the other wide receiver because I think he cut it too deep. But he played the middle of those post routes, which for y'all at home is extremely difficult mm -hmm. to do. We're talking about peripheral vision and awareness of the drop of the quarterback and your zone read. Mm -hmm. And he held off both of those because I knew we wanted to go quick slant, and he held off both oh. of those routes individually, which I was like, that's a, that's a man play right there. That's a man play right there. Yeah, yeah, and you see, you see players like that where Cole is making these plays, and, like, it's a lot of things that he do on film that a lot of people doesn't – they don't understand it, but it makes sense because he's doing something that he needs to be doing, which is playing safety, doing what he needs to be doing as the quarterback on defense, and making sure that the quarterback on their team hold the ball just a tad bit longer, mm -hmm. which gives us the opportunity to get there, strip fumbles, next time we need to score. So as a safety, do you approve? Oh, come on now, yeah. <laughs> come on now. He, he, he's been doing really well. And on top of that, it's like the defense has played completely different when he's in the game. It's, it's night and day, like going back to that USC game. It was like the first half, Cole played, and it was like the first half he didn't play, I mean, and it was like the defense did good. You know, it, was, it was pretty good. But then that second half, it changed. And then he's making hits. He's, his number is always in the film of every play, which means that he's going red line defense that we learned at the University of Utah. And he's doing it with the effect of, I want the ball. Not just like, oh, I'm just going over there. No, he wants to make a play and he wants his name and his number to be known. That's what us safeties do. <laughs> <laughs> And it was bittersweet to see him announced at Senior Day. Yeah. Yep. Senior uh, day. I mean, we don't know what's going to transpire in the next couple of weeks. You've got the transfer portal is official on December 4th. That's the first day, I believe, of uh, high school early commitments as well. So our roster and personnel may change, not drastically by any measure, but change for what we know it today before we even get a bowl invitation. Mm -hmm. oh. So we wish him the best. We wish all of them the best. But you know what? It, come on back. All right. <laughs> it's money. So the Utes pull out a close victory against the Colorado Buffaloes today, 23-17. We'll be right back. It's a community coming together to support University of Utah student-athletes. It's our town. It's our team. Our town. Our team. Crimson Collective, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. We're in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Crimson Collective. Our town, our team. Oh, welcome back, you fan faithful. We are sitting here with Bryson Reeves, junior safety for the University of Utah. We're going to open up the segment and talk about injuries, which has been unfortunately a common theme with the team this year and is a major theme for every team every year. So how are you doing, sir? 
Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing blessed. Very blessed. And thank you for coming on. It's good to see you. Oh, of course, of course. And uh, you know, I'll do anything to support Utah and anything to do with Utah. And uh, that's just something that you know we learn here. <laughs> Got to support it all the way. <laughs> Absolutely. So, real quick, your opinion of the performance today? Uh, today, you know, we squeaked out with the win, but like defense, that's what we play with. Like. They did solid. They did, they played solid all year long. We had Luke Batar. He sits next to me in the locker room. I love the kid to death, and I'm just glad he got his touchdown. He got his game management in. Mm. He got a lot of his opportunity that he's been talking about and really wanted for a long time, so I was really happy for him. And it's always fun to see the brotherhood role and the team to get their success and to move on, but there is a difficult side to witnessing that when you're on the injury report. Oh, yeah. You have been suffering from a season-ending injury this year. Do you want to tell us the circumstances you're in? Um, so I've been blessed. I got to play on both sides of the ball at Utah. And then in my sophomore year of uh, playing out here, I had to get a hip surgery. I was 20 and uh, got my first hip surgery. Um, turned out to be a lot worse than they said in the MRI. So I missed the last three games of my sophomore season and my entire junior year season. So it wasn't only season-ending, it was the next season-ending. <laughs> Um, and then I ended up getting my left hip done in the middle of that process. So in the past uh, 11 months, I've had two hip surgeries and a birthday. Nice. So that's been pretty cool. Um, yeah, other than that, it's been a tough road, you know, because weirdly, you have a lot of camaraderie in the injury room right now, which mm -hmm. is not something that I think is normal. I think a lot of times a lot of players suffer from isolation and a lot of those type of feelings. But, you know, being with Cam and Brant and all the guys kind of filtered in and out throughout the year is – kind of got the opportunity to be still add value and that's what you really try to do when you play for Utah is just add value any way you can so being able to add mental value and positivity to the guys who can come back earlier than you is really in my opinion how you can stay positive and stay happy while you're going through what this kind of circumstance and that's part of the leadership traits that draws that draws coaches attention to the locker room is who's leading by example like mm -hmm. you see um, you saw Cam Rising sending in the signals today You've seen, uh, you've seen Cole on the sidelines when he's had to sit out coaching up the safeties as well. There comes a responsibility and an expectation to stay on page with the playbook, the, the film, all of that. Even though you can't implement it, you still have to be a student of the game. Yeah, I remember uh, my first three games out here, I could, I was reciting play calls, I was helping Scally, I was doing a lot more than I probably should have at the time, but it was just because it's what you know. You know how to do, and you're still lost, so locked in on football that even when I wasn't playing, it was still my entire life. That's what I thought about when I went home, it, what I thought about when I woke up. It's, <laughs> even though you can't physically play, it's still consuming almost. That's just the life we Mental live, reps. the life we chose. Mm -hmm. Mental reps is Mental really reps. everything. Yeah. And the mental reps is seeing yourself in the action while you're watching the action from the sidelines so mm -hmm. that you can put yourself in that situation. It's like watching film at home so that you're in that situation and you know how to read and react when you're not physically doing it for when you do get physically on it. Injury comes with some heavy responsibilities. You have your recovery, you've got your physical therapy um, that increases your already busy and full schedule. Do you recall any circumstances where you were, and we've all been hurt. Mm -hmm. Football, college sports, you play hurt. Very rarely do you step on the field feeling 100%. Mm. But then there's injured where you cannot play, where you feel as an athlete, I am going to be a detriment to the team's success if I step on the field. Do you remember the frustration of that timetable of trying to rehab and get back on the field? Uh, yes, uh, for me, um, um, going to my uh, NFL days, um, I messed up my foot, um, a Liz Frank injury, um, tore it a week 14, and um, the season was almost over. Um, I felt like at that moment, it's not that bad. I'm like, I should be good. But then knowing that you have to go to surgery and knowing that you get put on, a, on, on um, IR, it's like, or injury reserve for um, IR, it's like, it changes your mindset because like we was just saying, if you feel very isolated, but on top of feeling isolated, it's like, what is my next move? Um, am I ever gonna come back from this? Um, sometimes you hear the, you hear the, the uh, statistics about when you injure one thing, you injure more things as you're trying to heal from the other thing. So it's like a mental game and it starts, it starts playing with you because you wind up getting another injury in which I wind up getting a second injury as I was getting better for the first injury, wind up having a second surgery on my foot, which was an Achilles injury. And it just felt like it's over, you know, like it's, what am I doing this for? So sometimes going through that, a lot of people don't understand it. And 
They see it as you're an athlete. They see us as athletes. It's something that we're supposed to be doing. This is our job. This is what we love. This, this, that. But then they don't understand how tough it is, especially when I go back to my college days of trying to juggle education on top of juggling that. You have to make sure you're there for your teammates. Mm -hmm. And then you got to make sure to do your rehab. And now all of a sudden you got the NIL deals where you got to make some money, like doing some of these promos. And it might be the same time as your injury, as your reserve time to do physical therapy. And it's just like, how do I supposed to juggle this all as a student athlete and as an 18 year old that's going through a division one college that depends on you and your scholarship is here because of the, the, the stuff you did on the field. So it's tough, but everybody has a difference. So I mean, like, Kofuzi, what, what do you have going on? Absolutely, I did my shoulder, and in today's world, I feel like you know you're not a college player until you do a shoulder, and that's just the nature of the game. I always hit, talk back on that, as well as with injuries and in playing Division One football, it's always an uphill battle with your health. Um, you know, you got 18, 19 year olds coming in, um, playing big time ball here. Um, you know, it's a violent sport. That's the truth of it. We got rules changing about it, but it's a violent sport. And your body just takes those hits and the wear and tear and the strain. It all adds up. Um, I know, I think George Kittle has mentioned it. It's, it's a car crash every time he has the ball. And so being able as an athlete to, you know, focus on your health, um, you know, physically, but then that mental game you said when you're hurt, feeling isolated, feeling behind, am I doing enough? It's really tough. It's a lot to juggle. And so um, here at Utah, what I've always found, is that that brotherhood is, is what's priceless. And that's what really makes championships, you know, the in locker room leaders, um, the being able to lean on your brothers, just the camaraderie to get through those hard times is what really got me through hard times. Um, but as you said, as a student athlete, it is not a normal life. And in today's world with NIL moving forward, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, and you mentioned just a couple of weeks to, ago to us that there was somebody on the team that got their first surgery mm -hmm. done and you were going over just for support because you had been in that situation before. Yes. I mean, it, we've all been hurt. We've all been injured. Can you speak to the point of how different your daily schedule routine changes with the expectation of rehab and or injury recovery? Uh, you know, everything really changes. Like, one thing I really wanted to touch on is, like, I didn't want to call you as old heads or nothing, but, like, I was just 18 and 19. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking I'll at you down there. old heads, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was just 18 and 19, and you had this feeling of invincibility where oh. the time commitment at the time is... Easy. You, you could do everything. Yeah, I'll you run through had, a wall five, five times if that's what it exactly. takes. Exactly. You had this like adrenaline all the time just from being here and having it. And then once you get hurt and that invincibility kind of gets stripped away, that's something that like a lot of players have never prepared for in their life. And they, they deal with imposter syndrome. That. Exactly. So like when you really, the mo biggest part of your daily schedule that changes is even though it gets more busy, you feel a lot less, a lot more lazy because you're not uh, working out. You're not running. You can't yeah. break a sweat. It took me nine months to break a sweat after surgery, mm. like a true sweat. And it was in hot yoga, so it wasn't really a true sweat. <laughs> like, I still can't, you know, run for upwards of 15 minutes and, you know, cut and really run and sweat. Mm. So that really is the biggest change in my daily schedule is how do I burn the energy? <laughs> how, do I, how do I, you know, find that time on top of the school and the treatment and the meetings and everything else that ends up just being a lot of sitting how do I burn the energy that I've been used to burning for 21 years of my life? So that finding d different any ways to do that while keeping your health and your sanity is... The many lifestyle changes exactly. are necessary. It, it turned turn into many lifestyle changes, new hobbies you never thought you would do. <laughs> and, and it, nobody plans on getting injured in their dreams. Like nobody sits oh. down and says, dear journal, I want to be a D1 player, might blow a knee out, <laughs> might have to take another year to get to the league, but... That's the reality is that we all have to deal with it because it's a major component and we've talked about it every single week. Mm -hmm. Another side to the injury bug is how it's handled on the medical, mm -hmm. on the medical side, because you have, a, you have people whose job it is to get people back on the field, to be productive. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and I'm not saying that this is an example at the university, but sometimes there are those on the medical staff at the school that differs from medical professional opinion outside. Mm -hmm. We've had several players get outside medical and there's differing opinions. And so as a player, you want to believe that your best interest is kept in heart by the coaches, by the athletic department when you get recruited. But there comes a point when you realize you are a number. Oh, yeah. Hey, this yeah. game's a business. It, yeah. it, it, oh. And there, yes, there's no business band-aid to put over an injury because you're not supposed to lose your job to injury, but... Please, the, the, the best question that they ask you or the hardest question is, are you going to play today? Are you going to go today? Mm. Mm. 
They're putting it on you. And, and, then you, and then you don't know exactly how to answer it because you don't know if your job is on the line, your starting job is on. You don't, you don't know what's happening. If you answer it, it's like a two-way sword of like, you say, yeah, I'm healthy, even though you're not. You get out there on the field, you hurt something else or you reactivate it and you, you get it going. And it's like, okay, that can happen. Then if you say no, you start wondering, are they going to take my scholarship? It, to bounce like, off that, really, like I, I, before going into my sophomore season when I got the injury, I went into it hurt. I went into it and I tore my labor in my hip and they were like, look, we can shoot it up with cortisone and you can play the season yeah, until you get it on. Um, and then, you know, I looked at my coaches and they yeah. So I'm sitting there, you shoot me up. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no surgery. Shoot me up. Let's play. And that was not even a question. It took me 30 seconds to be like, yep, we're playing no hesitation. When granted, I probably should have got surgery before the mm. season. But like you said, no one steps on the field 100%. Mm. Why would I be the exception to that? Yep. And you don't know if it, what their prognosis or what they are going to have you go through is in the best interest of your health long term. Oh. They may be able to get you on the field next week, but are you going to be able to sit down on the floor and play with your kids in 20 years? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a circumstance on the team right now with Nate Ritchie when he hurt his back in spring ball. Mm, yep. yeah. Team doctors gave him some advice. Medical doctor that was related to the family gave him totally different advice. He decided to take the best advice for his long term health. A lot of people were upset with that choice, but at the end of the day, it's a business, and you've got to look out for yourself. Mm -hmm. When I was injured, it was a neurological issue, and everybody wanted me to try their treatments to see if it would help me get back on the field at their expense. When you're injured, everybody has ideas of how you're supposed to get back on the field, yes. but at whose expense is it at? Mm -hmm. Yours, your physical and your mental, yes. taxing. Do you recall any m moments where you had to decide, should I go? Absolutely, you know. Um it just seems like every day in the trenches. That's kind of how it seems like, honestly. Yep. Um, you know, you're getting your ankles done up because, you know, those have been rolled over and stepped on a bunch. Um, but like you said, you, and especially what I found in, you know, my, my later years of college ball was um, it kind of played up being the leader, being the, you know, the senior and stuff. So just being able to go out there and be a warrior, you know, being able to, to fight through some pain, you can have some strain, but then again, you know, there can be some serious injuries. And we always said, you know, Use football as much as it uses you, because it will use you all the way up to your Liz Frank, all the way up to your hip, all the way up to your shoulder, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, and like what you said right there is like you built, you know, up that to be the leader, to be, mm -hmm. you know, that um, figure on the team. You mm -hmm. have to play through all this pain. You have mm -hmm. to go through all this pain. Is that something that is very not shown? We mm -hmm. ever trained where kids playing the sport show up to the building the same every day. Mm -hmm. yep. Like that's the biggest thing is show up to the building the same every day. So Body especially language. when mm -hmm. you are in a leadership role. It doesn't matter how you're hurting or what hurts is you have to play the same and show up the same and smile the same. So I, to anybody who has an injured friend or anybody like that injured family member, check on them when they out of their area, because that's when, you know, the actual emotions of stuff kicks in. Cause you know, when you're actually there, okay, I got treatment, I got practice, I got meetings, we're in the mode and you, you have to smile on your face. You're locked in. That's, this is life. But it's that after effect that when you leave, you outside the building, now you take a breath and be like, okay, I can feel the pain in my leg again. How do you react? How do you handle that situation? When you're alone with your own thoughts. <laughs> and you're your worst enemy in that circumstance because you want to point the finger in the mirror because it's the easiest person to blame and it's the easiest person to motivate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes one step back is necessary for two steps forward. And that seems to be the injury way. Mm -hmm. So looking forward, what's in the future? Um, I'm just excited to test it, you know, having a, that's going to be a total of 13 months before I'm allowed to test the physical abilities of my leg and my hip. So I'm going to test it in January, put on pads and spring ball, I hope. And uh, we're going to see if I can rock for a season or not. And uh, if not, we, man, like, I, like he said, use it for everything they can't use you. So I'm going to try to get my MBA program paid for in some <laughs> way or another and get into that program and uh, start my life that way. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you for opening up your life for you. Oh, yeah, and yeah, if there's you. any way that we can assist you moving forward, you know that's what we do. Man, that's I what we do. It, and if you want to, you want to go ahead and pitch. If anybody's interested in listening to these types of scenarios and situations, he's got a podcast. So I, uh, yes, I do host a podcast. Going to be launching early January. It's a bunch of um, injured or old ex-athletes, um, high successful players, anybody from the ages of yeah. 18 to 26, who's really on that next phase of wanting to great life, choosing great choices, and understanding that you can't really have it all. You have to sacrifice certain things. So it's really in the moment advice from people doing great things. Like we speak of commonly on this, life after laces. Life is a lot laces. longer than your career.
in your career. Thank you again for coming. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right, sports fans, thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back after we pay these bills. The Ken Garf University Club in Rice Eccles Stadium is Utah's premier social club. Members enjoy incredible dining experiences, co working spaces, exclusive member events, and fun game experiences like tailgating, pep rallies, and watch parties. Membership starts as low as $80 a month and is actively accepting new memberships. To learn more about joining this beautiful club, go to KenGarfUniversityClub.com to learn more. Welcome back to the show, you fans. I'm joined by Cal Beck, Devin Kafusi, and Robert Johnson. I'm your host, Andy Brown, and we're going to talk about this, in my opinion, pretty amazing season for the Utes, 8-4. and four. Um, We were picked to have one of the toughest schedules in the country, and obviously our team was decimated by injuries. Robert, Sound off. What do you think about this 2023 youth squad? An awesome team. I mean, we battled through a lot of different injuries and a lot of different things that has happened. And having a third-stream quarterback that stepped up and um, four losses in a season, like, that's really good. And then he even played really well against some of the top teams. So, you know, playing against Oregon, he, he beat some top teams, you know, USC. Um, the team done some amazing things. The defense did so remarkable on how they efficiently affected everybody when they played. And Sac Lake City is something that we we strive for, and that's something that we're big on. We did really, really well, but the whole defense did well. So this was a, a great season. It was a it was a season where the, the depth meant the most, and it showed that Coach Witt coached for depth, not for five stars, ten stars players, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's coaching for depth, and can you step in and do exactly what the player uh, uh, in front of you was doing, or can you do it better? Cal, eight and four, what do you think of this team? I, I want to say we had one of the top or toughest schedules in the country, if you look at strength of schedule. I know we had one of the three hardest, the definitely the hardest one in the conference. And if you look at that with an injury report, <laughs> an injury report on the second stringers is longer than the graduation list at Tim Few High School. Yes, I yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of people that are missing action. The positive side of that, we saw a lot of people get action, and I'm excited. The future is now to take the moniker for the season of 90, 1996. The future is now. And we saw it play out in the last couple of games. We've got nothing but great things coming down the pike. Um, we saw some players develop. We didn't think we'd get a lot of playing time, mm -hmm. but that was the nature of the game. Uh, as far as me, the biggest, brightest spot that's shown out of this year was J.J. in the backfield. Mm, the, yeah. the transition to transition. running back. It was a question mark, and he did more than hold his own. Absolutely. Going back on this season, first off, just super proud of our U boys. You know, I was there last season. A lot of my boys still up there and, you know, gritted it out. That eight and four is tough. Like you mentioned, this, uh, the, st the strength of schedule ahead, um, you know, the guys we have to show up to those games with. I just go back to Coach Witt. We see it all over inside the facility. It's either you're all in or in the way because it really is an all in effort. Um, there are some teams out there that aren't going to bowl games. You know, it, it, it could always be worse. It could always be worse. Colorado's um, trimming the <laughs> transfer portal. They are. <laughs> they exactly are. And so from the season of what you look at, you know, it, um, it's the story you have. To have an 8-4 and four season with the injury you've had, the defense had to be, you know, close to lights out, which they're able to show up consistently each game, um, cause havoc. Offensively, you know, having two freshmen starting in some key roles, mm -hmm. um, new transfers coming in as well. Um, it just really shows that camaraderie that they have and trust in, in the hard work that Coach Witt sets by example. And so kudos to Coach Witt. We're super grateful for you because we all know it's from the head down. And he knows that as well. And that takes a lot of responsibility, um, a lot of humility as well, but also shows a lot of pride in who he is as a man. So favorite games, highlights from the season. I'll start. Um, I about had a heart attack um, just downstairs here at the Ken Garf University Club watching the USC game with you guys. Um, Cole Becker for the win. That's probably my big highlight for the season. The other honorable mention would be Bryson Barnes to Money Parks against Florida, that, the mm. first uh, offensive play of the season. Mm -hmm. Favorite plays for you, Robert? Well, that favorite was games. That, that was my favorite play. Like opening season right there, to me, that set, that set the tone for the whole season of like, we're going to figure out a way to get things done with that first pass, like deep, deep shot. And it was just like awesome. 
it, the crowd wasn't even sitting all the way in their seats yet before that play happened. And a lot of people was like, "When I missed it. It was one of the best plays that I've seen in the whole season because that just said it. That just showed us. It gave us the, the faith. It gave us the hope. It gave us on top of that that this is Utah football. We're going to figure out ways to win. Cal? My favorite plays always get flagged as illegal hits. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to say. It, there were a lot of flashes uh, in the pan. There was, there was a lot of things to get excited for watching the season. That, the, the bomb in the Florida game set the tone for the season, and that's hard to match. Mm -hmm. that, that's hard, especially with that opponent in here. Uh, I, there was a couple of flashes in the Washington game when I was up in Seattle. Even though their backs were against the wall, I was proud how they fought in the second, in the third quarter when they came out, when there was nobody was giving them a chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are highlights from every single game. Uh, I would like to see special teams be a little bit more explosive. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that they're horrible, but we're used to a very top-tier, high-end production on special teams. Yes. And it seemed like they, big plays were made on them. I'm excited to see, because I know Sharif is all up in that, and that's his baby. And if there's any coach that's going to be enthusiastic, positive, and get things turned around quickly, it's, it's the sheriff, it's Sharif. Mm -hmm. Top plays, yeah, Florida, Bar Barnes the Money, that was awesome. You know, just being buddies with Bryson and, you know, having, you know, as we saw it unfold, the correct situation, it was a lot of uncertainty. It wasn't out to the media, it was airtight. And Bryson's be able to carry that mantle and go out there and throw that deep ball. A lot of guts. He was letting it all hang out there, which I loved. Going back on special teams, I'm trying to think what stood out to me was, I think Mikey Matthews, for sure, was a bright spot mm -hmm. when it came to our special teams. Um, touching on those younger players would be happy for it. Um, they'll be able to reload and tune up for next season. So Mikey was great. Um, the fact we don't mention Jack uh -huh. is a good thing. Yes. Like, like punters. Jack, so thank Jack you, Jack. Jack. Easter. Bowie yes. man, the man from down under. And that guy, he's, he's, been, he's been a highlight there for sure as well. And then our defense, just exactly what you want to see. Just smother teams, explosive plays we talk about, shooting for three takeaways a game, mm -hmm. um, just flying around being, you know, the biggest, baddest defense here in the pack. I, I loved it. I think I just got to mention Sione Vaki. I mean, yes. one of the great spots of the season. Absolutely. Uh, he was on our show a couple weeks ago. He's a great guy, uh, obviously a very talented player. We're looking forward to him coming back next season. Uh, speaking of people who are coming back next season, uh, number seven, he's going to be back, Cam Rising. Bad moon rises bad, again. Bad moon rises <laughs> again. Um, this is a big deal. I mean, I mean, I know he's a seventh-year senior. He's coming off a major injury. But Utah's looks poised to do a lot of damage in the Big 12 in their first season. What do you guys think about the impact Cam announcing he's coming back is having on the program? Uh, the quarterback room is extremely crowded now. <laughs> I mean, it it's going to affect some recruits not coming in their freshman year because this bumps everybody back one year. Uh, but it gives – you've got a leader, two-time conference champion, team captain, coming back to lead the team into uncharted waters of the Big 12. This is what big-time quarterbacks live for. And people are going to rally around him. I see this as it, it's going to be a very slow off season for a lot of players because they're going to be excited to get back out there. Well, and begs the question: I mean, are other are players that wouldn't have come back coming back because Rising announced he's coming back? Yeah, you never know. It, it, you That's look possible. At, you look at three weeks ago. We had we had three starters that were not going to play that week. You had Rising, you had Cole, and you had sub. Oh, and Barnes. They were out, listed as unplayable. We don't know if they were hurt, injured, or transferring mm -hmm. in the portal. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, it was all three. Mm. So now when you have players that aren't playing or when they were missing, like the end of the season, they may not be here next year. Yeah. And Cam coming back will have some impact on both sides of that. Mm -hmm. Both sides of that. I know we got two four-star recruits out of high school, one local, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Wilson, my teammate's kid, Isaac, out of Corner Canyon, Isaac, yeah. and the one from California. Mm -hmm. Okay, One already decommitted. Mm -hmm. We've got one in the transfer portal. We wish you the best, Johnson. We wish you the best, Nate. Mm -hmm. But, it, I mean, this is the business side. Free agency changes everything mm -hmm. college, for the team coming College free agency. College free agency. It's uh, changing. It's crazy, huh? Yeah, it is. Agency. And we don't know who's going to, now that Cam's come back, on December 4th in the transfer portal. Who's going to come What wide receiver's looking? Oh, they need a deep threat. They've got somebody who can throw it. They may need some mm -hmm. wheels. We end up with that guy. It, that's the crazy thing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a fantasy football draft yeah. where you don't know who's going to be available or who's going to be on the roster until you start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, like, going into Cam, like, Cam is – he 
he is the man. Like, that's just hands down. He is the man. I have a full-time, like, feeling that he's going to pull in some recruits just because, of, just because of who he is. Because they know that we have a leader. We have somebody that know how to win. Back-to-back Pac-12 championships. He know what it takes. Now we just got to get the pieces. And this college free agent frenzy is like, <laughs> he, we're going to pull some people that's going to be like, how did that happen? Well, Cam is Cam is the one like that's bringing in a lot of not just hope, but a lot of he has won, and we have seen this happen. So we can see that he can get things done. New conference, we still look for the same results. Uh, some final thoughts from Devin Kafusi. Like you said, Cam is the man. You know, being captain with him last year um, is absolutely phenomenal, and him coming back. I hear about the age thing a lot and stuff, but we all know in football, especially as the quarterbacks. You could be playing quarterback for a long time and, uh, you know. Grown man spirit. Grown hey, man. When you play the blue team down south, you don't talk about age on the roster. Exactly. That's a moot exactly. Point. It's a moot point. It's something we've seen. You know, we've seen it, and, you know, I'm super excited for him. You know, his family loves it here. You know, it's what we have that's, you know, uh, you know that's priceless. Witness In a time where the sport is, a lot of price tags are popping up. When you have a solid team, um, a solid program that is consistent, you know, that builds each other up, that hangs together in tough times. Um, you know, Cam Epitomus is that. He's been a huge part of that the past couple of years, him taking us to the championships. So I'm so excited to see Seven back here in red. Um, it's going to be an awesome ride. Um, you know, and it'll be interesting to see how the portal changes up. Mm. Got You know, yeah, if I'm a receiver, I would be coming for Cam Risen. He's the guy. So the U is flashing on Mount Van Cott tonight. Thanks for watching another great episode of The Extra Point brought to you by the Ken Garf University Club and presented by utefans.net. Check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Apple Music, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram at utefans.net, and go Utes. Go Utes. Go Utes, baby. To El Paso, Sumble. <laughs> <laughs>